2018 is the year. Uh, so you decide to start that as a, I guess, as a, as a charity back in 2018. So we're like, so what is that? What does that kind of look like? Yeah. So the the th- the thought first came to mind actually in late 2017. Mm. Um, so at the time I was on maternity leave with my second child. So I had a a newborn and a toddler at home and. I, you know, I've grown up in Canberra. I really care about the Canberra community. Mm. And with both of my kids, I'd wanted to pass my secondhand baby items on to families in my own community that needed them. Mm. And I'd given things away in various ways on Facebook Marketplace, which can be a bit of a pain, as many people know, um, and to local women's refuges who, you know, had limited space and couldn't always take what I wanted to pass on. Um, And so by the time I came to having my second child, I'd stumbled across a charity in Melbourne called St Kilda Mums, who rehome pre-loved children's items to to local families. They're big down there too. Yeah, Yeah. they are, exactly. Mm. So I just thought surely something like that could work in Canberra. Um, And yeah, it all kind of spiralled from there. I sent some emails to local um, community services Mm -hmm. to see if they thought something like that could work. And the response was a a definite yes. Great. Um, Yeah. So then I sort of got got the wheels in motion. And while I was on maternity leave, um, uh, with the help of a a bunch of women from my social network and my mother's group and my working life, formed the initial board that got roundabout off the ground. So the idea really comes from like a need, right? A need that you saw that existed. Can I just, though, ask you about that idea of, you know, now wanting to sort of be kind with with the stuff that you had Mm. so that us could benefit like what is what does that idea come from for you Mm. like the you know the idea of kindness like what does that sort of mean for you and your life Mm. I I mean I think uh, a a sense of um, giving and giving to those who are around you is something that's sort of been deeply instilled in me Mm. Um, you know from my childhood it's something my parents have always been very generous and have always given to charities and you know donated our pre-loved items to um, to local charities and things like that so it's something I've definitely grown up um, you know being very exposed to Um, and you know I nearly did social work at uni I didn't I didn't actually end up doing it but I've you know I've always really um, liked the idea of, of of supporting those around me who need support. Um, And I think I am, you know, kindness and compassion is something that sort of does come quite naturally to me. That's sort of how I approach life and how I approach my interactions with people. So, yeah, yeah, with starting Roundabout, I just, yeah, I I wanted to do something to help people around me who who needed help. And, um, yeah, there's definitely an an element of of kindness and compassion and and Mm. dignity as well is something that's very important to us at Roundabout that sort of weaves through the whole whole journey. Yeah. Can I ask you about young Hannah? Yes. Yeah, little Hannah? Yeah. Yeah, what was she like? Um, I think I was a a very sensitive child. So, Yeah. um, yeah, it's something my, yeah, my parents often used to tell me to, you know, toughen up a little bit and, and not be so sensitive. But I think, yeah. um, I actually think that sensitivity has, has meant that I have a lot of empathy for other people. I'm very in tune with, you know, my own emotions and the emotions of others. Mm. Um, and so I think that's actually something that's served me very well. Um, yeah. and, yeah. but yeah, I, yeah, I'm the oldest of, of two, of, of sorry, of three children. I have, have two siblings. Yeah. Um, I grew up in Canberra, um, went to local public schools, mm. uh, so, you know, mixed with a, 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 a broad range of, of friends and people from different socioeconomic backgrounds. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's, yeah, I've had a, yeah. Uh, were you a big dreamer as a little girl? Um, well, I actually, when I was younger, I, I thought I'd be a, a doctor. I was, like, quite yeah, right. determined that yeah. I, would, I would be a doctor. But then by the time I got to co- college and enrolled in chemistry, yeah. I realised that <laughs> medicine was not for me yeah, right. and Thanks. science was yeah. not where my, where my, my skill set lay. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I think I did have big dreams and I was always quite determined. I, um, so I then, you know, went on to – I actually studied criminology at, at uni in the end. Wow. And, you know, I was determined that I would um, go and work for the Australian Institute of Criminology yeah. and, and I got that job. So I think I am um, – yeah, I was always quite determined. So maybe some big dreams but a yeah. lot of determination there as well. Okay. Do you listen to a lot of criminal 
podcast by any chance? So, sometimes. I also listen to a lot of, um, you know, business and, and yeah. not-for-profit podcasts now, but yeah. I, there have been some really, some really good ones over the last few years. <laughs> so, yeah, I, yes. I do love a good tri- a crime, crime podcast. Yes. I know, I know many people who are, like, so gentle and nice and kind and then in their spare time they listen to, like, a lot of criminal stuff. Yeah. And I just think, yeah, I just think, like, what, what is that? Like, yeah. there must be something that, yeah, that, that kind of intrigues, you know, the, the aspect of being, like, I don't know, really kind and then trying to understand how people can be yeah. so, so different, maybe. Yes, yeah. what yeah. goes on in people's minds and what makes them tick. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... You grew up in Canberra, um, you know, now Canberra in 2024 looks very different mm. to, I mean, I, I've been in Canberra since 1991 mm. and Canberra has changed so much. Mm. What, are, like, what are your thoughts about Canberra today, how it's evolved, where do you think it's going, mm. all of that? Talk to me about that. I mean, I think... Canberra has become an amazing city. I've always mm. loved it, but it's, you know, it's really transformed in terms of, um, you know, the facilities that we have here and, you know, incredible restaurants and all of those sorts of things, the development. Mm. But I, I think that that growth and kind of the, the, the beautiful city that it is today also disguises the need that exists in the community. And yeah. I think um, for a lot of people, they view Canberra as a political town, a public service town, a very mm. middle class mm. town. And I think it's often sure. quite surprising to some people that there is a, a cohort of people in Canberra who are actually having a really difficult time and are very much in need of support. And I think um, even for myself, you know, when I started Roundabout, I, I knew there was a need, mm. but I I didn't realise how significant the need was. And I think obviously over the last few years, even even though Canberra has transformed and grown and, you know, we've got a light rail and we've got all these yeah. other, you know, yeah. impressive things, mm-hmm. we've also gone through COVID. We've gone through, we're going through a huge, you know, period of where cost of living pressures are, mm. are putting a, a lot of pressure on people who might not have otherwise previously needed support. Yeah. And I think um, not everyone in Canberra or outside of Canberra has an understanding of the need that exists in Canberra. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that's spot on. I, yeah, I remember Canberra, you know, when I was growing up to just be like a really simple place to exist, you know, and, and I think that the majority of people sort of like felt exactly the same mm. and now there are all of these different pressures that come in to to the city and to the town. Um, you know, I, I remember you know, in 2003 with the bushfires. And I just remember how the community really rallied behind, mm. uh, you know, itself and each other. Um, they, do you think that we've kind of lost a little bit of heart and soul in the city because of like the growth or, or do you think that it's just like a act like a perception that maybe we have? I think there's a bit of a perception. I think also there's, there's a, a piece there that's not unique to Canberra in terms of like a post-COVID world where um, I think so many people are just finding life so busy and mm. so they're struggling to focus on anything other than the sort of the here and now and what they're dealing with in their own lives. Yes, um, yep. Having said that, you know, in terms of roundabouts experience, we, we have this beautiful community of, of volunteers and of people who, you know, donate their things and, um, you know, connect with roundabout in other ways. So I do think sort of, you know, you talked about the, the bushfires and I think Canberrans, like there are lots of Canberrans mm. who, who are very dedicated to, to supporting their own community. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I think there is, it's sort of, there is this sort of, tricky situation that people are finding yeah. themselves in where just life's hectic and it's really hard to fit all those things in that that you want to do yeah 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 okay let me ask you about the first day of roundabout camera right did you give it a name on day one um pretty early on so yeah. we and actually the i picked the name roundabout camera and to me you know, for Canberrans, Canberra is full of roundabouts, roundabouts so Everyone's it's very so, yeah, it's typical tr- Canberra. Yeah, yeah. Um, so there was that, but then also that notion of kind of, you know, the circular economy and of giving back as well as sort of that, 
that cyclical nature. Mm. Um, and I shopped it around and no one liked it. But I, I still feel really proud of, <laughs> of yeah, the yeah, name. Yeah. And I'm, I'm not very creative and I'm not I'm not the person who is usually able to come up with names for okay. things or, you know, good slogans and, <laughs> and things like that. So, yeah, I think it's a, a very apt It name. is a great name, by the way. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, um, day one of, I still have these vivid memories of our first, it wasn't necessarily day one, but our first donation day where we, yeah. we put a call out on Facebook. We were a total, you know, unknown quantity. No one had heard of Roundabout before. Yeah. And we said that, you know, we needed people to donate their pre-loved. At the time, we were just focused on babies. We now help up to mm. the teenagers as well. But so. we needed people to donate their pre-loved baby items and that we'd be at, in this location on this particular day and the it, it was a torrential thunderstorm that oh, day it was just like a, a huge storm where there was a whole lot of flooding and I think people's roofs were damaged and things like that Gosh. and we were standing out the front thinking no one is going to show up this is going to be an absolute disaster what are we going to do and stacks of people came oh, they all right? came to drop off their stuff so yeah. it just sort of showed the power of social media and you know community yeah. and people yeah. spreading the word so yeah. yeah I guess that gave gave some hope that it, it could be something yeah nice so what is the what is the process now today right um, so people can give the things that they don't no longer need, but also people can support you otherwise. Mm. So can you give us a bit of an insight really into the everyday of Roundabout, but also, yeah, what are kind of like the processes in-house mm -hmm. that means that, you know, what you guys do as a team means that so many Canberrans can actually benefit from it. Yeah, so we have a we now have a warehouse in um, Holt in West Belconnen, in oh, yeah. for those who are from Canberra, um, yeah. and it's an old primary school that um, oh, that has right. been converted by the SD government into um, space for a number of different community services. Mm -hmm. So we're one of them that, that live in that building, which is great. Mm -hmm. um, and basically members of the public can come and drop off their pre-loved children's items. Yeah. So we help newborns up to... 18 year olds really but we go wow. up to size 16 children's clothing right um and our focus is on really anything that's considered essential to raise a child so cots prams car seats clothing toys toiletries school items um you know the sort of the, the full spectrum of of goods that you might need for children mm -hmm. and then we have an incredible team of about 250 active volunteers that's huge it's wow amazing yeah. who come to our warehouse we we have about you know each session we'll have about 20 volunteers there at a time um, and in those sessions our volunteers will sort and check and clean and prepare all of the donations to make right. sure that they're in great condition yeah. um, and as I mentioned before we're, we're very focused on dignity so mm -hmm. we're not looking to just pass on pre-loved items we're looking yeah. to pass on pre-loved items that are safe high quality beautifully presented yeah. Yeah. and they're all, you know our clothing packs are nicely folded and you know laid out so that when a yeah. family opens opens a box they feel good yeah, yeah. um so yeah our volunteers spend their time out there doing that and then the way that we actually provide the goods to the families so we don't work directly with the families themselves it's all done through a network of about 140 social services and community organizations so right. um social workers at the public hospitals women's refuges um the red cross through their um humanitarian settlement program um a whole range of services from you know the whole spectrum of of programs that support families mm -hmm. and basically whenever they're working with a family that needs stuff for their kids the service places an order with roundabout for that particular ah, family. Gotcha. Yeah. So each the needs of each family will vary. Mm. Some, particularly as we're coming into some very cold weather in Canberra, some might yes. just need a box of winter clothes. But others, you know, we recently helped a family that had eight children and they needed, wow. you know, a pram, a number of car seats, a cot, clothing for all the children, bedding for all the children. And so we provide exactly what each family needs. Yeah. And, and that removes the financial burden that comes from having to track down those items, but also the mental load that comes from having to think about the various items that you might need for different children. Yeah, yeah. And basically the service will then come and pick up the items and, and drop them off to the family. Yeah, wow. Well, that's incredible work, right? Yeah. What is the hope that you have for Roundabout Canberra? 
So we know that there's, you know, there's quite a well-known stat in in Canberra that there are at least 8,000 children living in poverty in Canberra Um, at the moment. We actually think that number's probably higher and, and, you know, particularly with the cost of living pressures that people are seeing. Um, So last year we helped just over 4,000 children. So we've, you know, grown a lot in the the six years that we've been around. Mm. But we basically just want to make sure that we're able to be there for every local child that needs our support. So we were aiming to help 5,000 children this year. Um, But we just want to be, we want to be a stable, Mm. you know, a stable part of the suite of services that's available to to local families in Canberra long term. Yeah. Yeah. How fantastic is that? Uh, And so do you find it easy working with other like-minded organisations in the ACT? Yeah, do you find it like a bit of a wrestle or like, yeah, what does that look like? My experience has been extremely positive. I have found that um, organisations in the community sector and other not-for-profits are very um, keen to collaborate and to avoid duplication, to work alongside each other. Um, It's, yeah, I actually, it's, it, I, I probably didn't necessarily expect it to be as positive as an, uh, of an experience as it has been. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, I found there's, yeah, no one wants to reinvent the wheel. They're all keen to share ideas and, you know, help people avoid going down a path that, you know, they found doesn't work. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I've, I've, I've definitely found that in Canberra as well as outside of Canberra in terms of other organisations that I've connected with. But yeah, it's been a, a really good experience. That's good to hear, yeah, because, yeah. you know, the better you guys work together, the more benefits to the wider community, right? Definitely. Yeah, that's really awesome. And if we can all just focus on the bits that we do well, yeah. it's um, and, and that's, you know, a really important part of what Roundabout does. Yeah. We're obviously focused on providing the support to the families, yeah. but we are also freeing up the you know, that, those 140 organisations that we work with, we're freeing them up so that they can, they don't need to think about where they're going to access material goods for the families they're helping. They get that from roundabout and then they can focus their time and, mm. you know, budget and, you know, full mm. full attention on yep. addressing the other, the other right. needs of the families. That's right. That's, that's why I don't think that there's such a thing as competition mm. in the not-for-profit sector, right? Because at some point or another, Whilst, particularly on the surface, it looks like organisations might do exactly the same, strengths and capabilities lie in different points, right? Absolutely. So if everybody can focus on what they're really, really great at, you know, then everybody does that, then the whole community wins and organisations win likewise, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Hannah, what's a day-to-day look like for you? Yeah, you're a CEO, you're a mum, you're a wife, yeah, like what is... Like, when do you get up? Life's a juggle, as I'm sure <laughs> most busy parents who work yeah. um, find. Um, yeah, so I, I typically get up early and exercise in the morning, which I've, I, it's really important to me. It sort of it allows me to clear my head and it's a really important part of my day. And if mm. I if I don't get to do that, I, I find it sort of, you know, I'm not off to a good start. <laughs> um so, yeah, get up fairly early and then, you know, uh, my husband's a small business owner as well. So we, we always have, you know, a bit of a juggle in terms of who's who's managing which extracurricular oh, yeah. activities for the kids and things like that. But yeah. thankfully we do have grandparents in uh, – our parents are in Canberra, so that's a, a huge help. Yeah, they're amazing, <laughs> absolutely amazing. Yeah. Um, and I know a lot of people in Canberra don't have that, so we're very mm. lucky. Mm. Um, but in terms of my, my working day, every day is different and I really like that. So. Mm. You know, I might be, um, you know, we might be short staffed. I might be hands on and, you know, helping to um, get things, you know, moving in the warehouse and, and supporting the rest of the team to make sure that we can, you know, get through what needs to be done in a particular day. Mm-hmm. Um, it might be meeting with, you know, someone from the ACT government. It might be um, meeting with a potential corporate partner, um, you know, preparing for a our tax appeal, which is coming up. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's varied, you know, obviously, you know, meeting with various members of our team. Yeah. Um, but it's, I actually really love that. The days mm-hmm. are unpredictable and every day is different. Yeah. Um, there's always a challenge in every day. Yes. Um, and I'm always facing things that I haven't done before or that I don't know how to do and I have to work out how to do them. And like, that's, yeah, very personally satisfying, mm-hmm. which is great. Yeah, that's cool. Um, And when you're not at work, 
when, you, when you're with your family, like, do you find it easy to sort of put, you know, put things aside, your responsibilities aside as CEO? Is a rover lab when you're at home and you've got to do bits and pieces for roundabout? I find it really hard to switch yeah. off. And yeah. it's actually something I've been, like, very actively working on um, yeah. this year in particular. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I think when you're doing something that you're really passionate about and really care about, it's very easy to sort of blur the lines between work and home. And um, so, yeah, I do find it, I find it very hard to switch off and yeah. to draw the limit and to, you know, be properly present with my family. So it's it's something I'm making a very, very active, um, yeah. you know, active, yeah, I'm, I'm very actively focused on that at the moment yeah. to try and make sure that... Yeah. Um, yeah, I am focused on my family because I think, you know, the list is always far longer than you can ever get through. <laughs> and, you know, I, yeah, I'm just learning to get comfortable with, you know, focusing on the highest priority, priority things on a particular day mm. and then closing my laptop and, <laughs> and leaving the rest for tomorrow. So, yes. Yeah. But it's a challenge. It is a challenge. And I guess really this year, there's, it's it's even been even more challenging at the same time that you're trying to hit, maybe work in, on the balance component. The ACT is also throwing mm. one of its biggest accolades your way <laughs> as 2024 Citizen of the Year, and congrats on Thank that. Thank you. Um, obviously, that's just another wonderful thing to throw into the into the mix. What has that meant for you um, to get such a huge accolade? Mm, oh, I was yeah really like very chuffed to receive an award like that I you know obviously as as a very proud Canberran as someone who's grown up here it means a lot to to receive an award like that um but in terms of you know it, it's been absolutely incredible for Roundabout in terms of the publicity and awareness raising and um you know attention from the media so there was you know a lot of media interest which was great and came at a really good time because we you know we've yeah. seen a spike in demand um for our service this year which means we need a lot more stuff we need a lot more donations of yeah. goods to to keep yeah. pace with that demand so um yeah it, it just the timing actually worked out beautifully so all this incredible publicity has yeah. has meant that we've had lots of lots of donations coming in um, yeah, but we, we still need more. So, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. but yeah, that's been that's been really good. That's really good. Yeah. Do you find that you know you get recognised on the streets now, or like has it has that really changed like at all? Not really. No. I mean, I, I it was I mean lovely to you know I've heard from so many people to you know congratulate me and wish me wish me well, which was lovely. So you know I think the. It shows that the publicity did really reach far and wide, which is yeah, has been great for many reasons. Mm. Um, but no, no, I don't, I don't feel like I'm famous in Canberra. But yeah, um, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah, well, I th yeah, I think such a huge accolade, you know, it was was very well awarded this year. You know, given the fact that you've, you know, you've gotten round about Canberra started as a, you know, as a mum and you've turned it into a, quite a success story, you know, it's it's one of the better known local organisations. You know, I think I think in, in Canberra we tend to know big name organisations, yeah. you know, like the Salvation Army, whatever else, those yeah. names, Cancer Council, all of that stuff, like those are not, you know, unique to Canberra. They mm. weren't started here. Um, and the fact that you've been able to start, uh, you know, an organization and grow it in such a small amount of time to the point where you are affecting impact to so many lives. It's just quite a remarkable thing, right? Oh, thank you. You know, um, I think I think people also are drawn to Roundabout because there's there's a way for people to con there are so many different ways for people to contribute. Yeah. So, you know, like there's financial supporters, but there are those people who are just looking for an avenue to pass on their secondhand children's items, and they really like the idea of knowing that it's going directly into the hands of people who need it. Yeah. And then we have this, you know, volunteer opportunity as well, both for individuals looking to volunteer and for workplaces. And so I think there's just these, yeah, these various ways that people mm. can connect and they can give give whatever it is out of those, you know, three streams that they want yes. to give. Yeah. Um, and I think it's nice for people to feel that they're supporting their, their local community. Yes. So. Yeah. Can I ask you what you hope for as a, as a mum for your children? Yeah. So... 
actually a really um, important part of, of roundabout and the whole sort of roundabout journey for me has been exposing my children to mm. what what we're doing and he- helping to sort of instill that sense of giving mm. and you know generosity and you know thought for others in them that is really important to me um, so my I've got a six-year-old who Grew, has grown up around, I mean both my children have grown up around yeah. roundabout but she was yeah. only a few months old when when I started roundabout yeah. so my kids are very used to spending time at roundabout yeah. especially in those early years spend a lot of time there as as did a number of our volunteers children and and now some of our, our other paid staff's children yeah. so there's just this lovely sort of community of children who've yeah. been a really important That's part great. of roundabout and um yeah sometimes I sort of doubt that you know that it's all sort of rubbing off on them well enough but, but you know every now and again I hear hear my kids explain to other people what roundabout mm. is or what I do and that's cool like it, yeah it makes me very proud because I think yeah. you know that it's it is really helping to sort of shape them as as adults and, and helping to yeah give them appreciate an appreciation for for giving um yeah. Yeah. so yeah I hope that that does really rub off on them and yeah. that it does it does help them become yeah. people who, who yeah. value value that. That's great. That's really good. Cool. What about hopes for yourself? Like what do you hope for you in the future? I don't know. I yeah. Like for now I'm very focused on, you know, what I'm doing. I'm very focused on making sure that, you know, roundabout is, you know, will, will be, a, a you know, there for decades to come and, that, mm. you know, in 20 or 30 years' time where we're talking about roundabout in the same way that people talk about Vinnie's and, yeah. um, you know, other such well-known um, not-for-profits. Mm. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what – I can't <laughs> imagine doing anything other than what I'm doing now. Okay. Um, but I also know that at some point there'll come a time where, um, you know, either roundabout needs – something different I'm you know I don't have this is my first experience as a C, as a CEO of a not-for-profit before that yeah. I was in the Commonwealth Public Service so yeah. um, this is new to me and I'm you know constantly learning and constantly sort of um, you know changing my way of thinking and looking to sort of you know inform myself and learn new things so that I can sort of um, I can grow as roundabout grows yeah. but you know there might come a point where roundabout needs something mm. different um, or you know yeah. or I want something different but for now I just yeah I can't picture doing anything other than what I'm doing yeah. right now okay okay what about if I was to ask you how you want for the camera community to impact mm. roundabout What's what does an answer look like? I want every single parent in Canberra to to know that Roundabout exists mm. because I I know that um, yeah I know that you know it, we've become much better known and you know this award has really helped with that mm. but there are still lots of people who've never heard of Roundabout before so I want to make sure that every single Canberra parent knows that Roundabout exists and that we are sort of you know the the chosen destination for all pre-loved goods so that we don't have that worry about sort of making sure that we're able to to meet the demand for the support that families need yeah um and then yeah I just want to make sure that we're we're there for all of the all of the children and the families that need our help um yeah yeah Yeah. with so it is almost May now so and the financial campaigns for -for not-for-profits are well and truly either getting underway or they're being very, very, you know, planned very thoroughly now. Um, give us an insight as to what you guys need really for, you know, before June 30, mm-hmm. that, that deadline uh, that we all sort of know about. Like what is it that you guys need and how can how can we help? Yeah, so um, we're going to aim to raise forty thousand um, dollars by the thirtieth of June. So we'll launch launch our tax appeal um, mid mid to late May. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, so obviously financial donations are, are incredible, but we we also have this sort of um, dual need at, at this time of year in Canberra, where you know we we do need those funds so that we have the the flexibility to invest in whatever it is that we most need at a particular time. Um, but then we also it's a very cold time of year in Canberra, yeah. so yeah. we do have this this great need for for warm bedding and warm clothing um, 
for local families. We do have families that are that we're supporting that are living in sheds or living in tents or um, you know living in, in accommodation that has no heating. That's right. So yeah. Um, so yeah, we have these dual needs, and and both are equally as important for us yeah. to to yeah. be able to um, do the work that we do. Oh. Um, and having the support of the community for for both of those both of those needs makes it possible. Yeah, yeah, and I guess in that sense, you are really offering people an opportunity to impact your work and local Canberrans in need, really, in in two very different ways, um, which which is a really wonderful thing, right? Because people might have stuff that you need, yeah, and. Um, you know, I, like I can think of myself and my my family really that you know we've we've kept a lot of stuff from our you know when when our kids were were little or we've passed that down through family friends or church groups or whatever mm. else yeah um, so there's definitely a lot of stuff out there really that can go out and impact more and more people um, but there's also fundamentally that that value of financial support right Mm. so how does roundabout canberra utilize the funds that you Mm. that you guys raise yeah so um so our our funds go towards keeping our operation going Mm -hmm. so um it it covers various things so we we operate a very lean organization Mm. we have this incredible cohort of volunteers who which is you know obviously a very low cost um way of doing things um but we do have you know a small team of paid staff who Mm. really hold it all together and and that's a really important cost and it's a really important cost that we can um that we can meet and that's about delivering our program so it's about making sure that our volunteers are well supported and that they're well you know properly trained and you know have the guidance that they need to be able to deliver the work that we need to do it's about making sure that we're managing the relationships with the 700 social workers and support workers that we that place orders with us and that we're able to pack the orders and 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 you know meet the needs of the individual families um and it's about keeping our space safe and well ordered and managing those sort of peaks and troughs in in mm. goods which mm. is a, a tricky thing to manage so yeah it's really about managing our space our people um, and and our the delivery of our program mm-hmm. um, which you know from time to time we can also um, we, we also might need to purchase um you know bits and pieces like spare parts for items that we're repairing we're very focused on the circular economy and and making sure that we're rescuing things from ending up in landfill that's a really strong focus for us Mm. um so yeah making sure that we can um purchase spare parts that we can replace the teats in bottles that you know we can replace bits in breast pumps so you know so that those items can be um saved from landfill and and end up in the hands of families that need them yeah yeah yeah. All right. So it's about keeping operations running mm. and it's about um, you guys uh, purchasing the things that, you know, that people need the most. What are, what are the top three things that you guys receive and what are the top three things that people need the most? Mm. So we receive a huge volume of clothing, which is amazing because that is one of the, one of the things yeah. that we um, – that we do need a lot of, um, but we we really struggle to to get enough clothing for older children. So we get, we we um, yeah. So for children aged between five and. 18, 16, 18, yeah. um, we find kids are much harder on their clothes. They maybe they don't have as much clothing. Yeah, um, so that's there's a bit of a sort of gap there for us in terms of being able to get enough to support those older children yeah. um, that need help. Um, I guess, you know, the yeah, the the items that we we give out most of are it's probably linen, clothing, okay. um, and school items. Yeah. Um, we we give out yeah, but but items that we see as crucial and that we we don't get enough of are cots, prams, and car seats. Okay. So because we help that full range of children from newborns up to teenagers, yeah. we don't give out as many of those as we do clothing packs, for example. But those items are so vital because it gives yeah. families freedom to you know get their children out of the house, to get their older kids to school, to hop in the car and go go to medical appointments and things like that, to make sure that their children are sleeping safely in a in an appropriate um, yeah. sleep space at yeah. home. Yeah. Um, 
So yeah, so those are absolutely vital and and we are very careful about the goods that we rehome when it comes to those items that have mandatory safety standards. So we yes. do a safety check on those. Be, yeah, absolutely. Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and we do find that some of the items we receive just mm-hmm. don't meet the safety standards. So yeah. that's, those three items, cots, prams and car seats, are a, sort of an ongoing challenge for us because they're so important. There's so many risks around them. We need to make sure that what we're passing on is safe and suitable for a family to use yeah. but yeah. we don't get enough of those so okay. um yeah so that that's tricky but then we have this you know huge ongoing need for clothing bedding toiletries school items so those items that we might sort of you know consider uh, you know those of us who are comfortable might consider to be low cost um you know might not think twice about mm. but for the families that we're helping mm. they you know they don't have those items and yes. and they have to the parents often have to make a choice between purchasing you know winter clothing for their child or buying food or yeah, right. um, you know paying for their rent or putting petrol in the car so yeah you know, we often hear that by us being able to pro- provide any of those items that the families need, we're freeing up the, the little money that they do have so that they can direct it towards other essential yep. items. Yep, yep, gotcha. Now, Shibla. last question. Any Canberra that wants to help, how can they help? Yeah, so jump onto our website, so www.roundaboutcanberra.org and there, there are three ways that you can help. You can mm-hmm. support us financially. You can come and volunteer your time with us. You can consider getting your workplace involved. We do very fun um, workplace volunteer sessions, which yeah. are great for team team bonding and um, you know having getting out of the office. Yeah. Um, and then you can obviously donate your pre loved children's items. And if you don't have any pre loved children's items, then you can put a packet of wipes or nappies in your trolley next time you're going to the shops or some toiletries, and you can donate those to us. Yeah.